Ryzen 7000 is here, but is it worth buying over Ryzen 5000 or 12th gen Intel? Given that Ryzen 7000 requires more expensive DDR5 memory, more cooling, and new motherboards? Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. We'll go over what you need to know from the AMD announcement this week, including a couple of things I feel like folks may have missed. And then we're gonna answer your questions on Ryzen 7000. Remember, if you get value out of the video, please give it a like, as it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, Use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD key and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. On August 29th, AMD announced the launch of Ryzen 7000 CPUs on September 27th at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Essentially, we're getting a similar lineup to Ryzen 5000's launch, a six core 12 thread Ryzen 7600X for $299 an 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7700X for $399, a 12-core 24-thread Ryzen 7900X for $549, and a 16-core 32-thread Ryzen 7950X for $699. But as you can see from the pricing, things are a little different than Ryzen 5000 in that pricing for the 8-core 7700X is $50 cheaper than the $449 launch MSRP of the 5800X, and the 7950X it's a full $100 less than the $799 Ryzen 5950X launch MSRP. In terms of performance, AMD claims that Ryzen 7000 brings an up to 29% performance increase in single thread over Ryzen 5000 and in multi-threaded benchmark like V-Ray. AMD claims that Ryzen 7950X is 57% faster than an i9-12900K. AMD also claimed that its six core 12 thread Ryzen 7600X beats Intel's flagship i9-12900K in gaming by 5%. Now let's take a moment to remember that these are first party numbers and they should be taken with a large grain of salt until they're verified by actual third party testing. But the claims are quite impressive. Now from AMD's numbers on gaming, it wasn't clear if what we're seeing is the actual difference between the two CPUs or that we've simply maxed out the current generation of GPUs. So when a new faster generation of GPUs launches in the fall, it might be possible that we'll see that gap actually grow. AMD says it achieved these performance gains through a 13% instruction per clock or IPC increase over the previous generation, while at the same time increasing clock speeds going up to 5.7 gigahertz. So basically it's doing more every clock cycle and they're jamming a lot more clock cycles in as well. Now, of course, in order to achieve those clock speeds, Ryzen 7000 is gonna be more power hungry than Ryzen 5000 with TDPs increasing significantly across the board. And of course, as power goes up, so does required cooling. Where the Ryzen 5600X is a 65 watt TDP CPU that comes with an included box cooler, the Ryzen 7600X is now a 105 watt TDP with no cooler. While the eight core 7700X TDP is the same as the 5800X, the 7900X and 7950X both jump up to 170 watts TDP. But AMD does note that it has greatly increased performance per watt so we aren't expecting Ryzen 7000 to run as hot as say an i9-12900K. Now it is important to note that the way AMD calculates TDP, it's not a great way to estimate cooling as we've covered in our best cooler for Ryzen 5000 series videos. So before you go out to buy a cooler, you might wanna wait for actual testing. The other big news is that Ryzen 7000 will be DDR5 only. And AMD is launching its own memory profile called Expo, EXPO, to compete with Intel's XMP 3.0. Now DDR5 memory modules that come with Expo profiles, they should be available towards the latter part of September, just in time for the Ryzen 7000 launch. At the time of this video, I will note that DDR5 prices have improved dramatically in recent weeks. Though a 16 gigabyte kit still costs around $100 US for 4,800 speed memory, while a mainstream 16 gigabyte DDR4 kit running at 3,200 CL16 it's still just under 50 bucks. Of course, we also have the new AM5 platform with the launch of X670E, 
X670, and B650 chipset motherboards, beginning at $125 US. Now I'm guessing that's for the B650s, which will become available in October, while well, Ryzen 7000 is gonna launch with X670 on September 27th. The boards are bringing with them PCIe Gen 5, including some of them being able to use the new PCIe Gen 5 SSDs that are gonna launch around the end of September. The big difference between the chipsets, it really seems to be focused on how much connectivity they provide. We'll cover motherboards, of course, in much more detail as we approach the Ryzen 7000 launch. I do wanna highlight something that I felt a little bit off in terms of the new AM5 platform support. Now, AMD spent quite a bit of time reminding us how successful AM4 has been since its inception in 2016, supporting four different generations of CPUs. They're clearly taking a shot at Intel here. And let's be honest, AMD's AM4 support, it's been nothing short of amazing and frankly game-changing in the PC building space. So when they announced that they would support AM5 to 2025 plus, I felt like that date was oddly specific. According to AMD, they're on track for Zen 5 to launch in 2024. And if we expect a new CPU generation every two years, so Zen 6 would be 2026, not 2025, that would mean they're only committing to AM5 for two CPU generations, Ryzen 7000 now, and presumably Zen 6 based Ryzen 9000, that's if they stick with the odd number naming, in 2024. Now, while this isn't to say that they won't continue to stick with AM5 beyond 2025, the lack of a firm commitment here seems a little off. Of course, what AMD didn't announce it might be as interesting as what they actually did. So first, no Ryzen 7000 3D vCache chips. Though the missing 7800X seems like where we might find it as it's rumored to be launching in early Q1 2023. Now, if the performance rumors are even close to being correct, we could see tremendous uplift in gaming from an eventual Ryzen 7800X 3D. AMD also gave us a sneak peek at an RDNA 3 GPU test. And by sneak, I mean that literally if you blinked, you missed it because it was just glimpses of gameplay with no other details provided. So to sum it all up, AMD is launching new CPUs, but until faster GPUs are also available, how much faster is Ryzen 7000 than Ryzen 5000 when it comes to gaming? Since the 5800X 3D, it already exists. It's slightly faster than an i9-12900K, uses cheaper DDR4 memory on presumably cheaper B550 motherboards. Then what's the case for gamers to jump to Ryzen 7000 right now? Of course, we might not have to wait very much longer to find out with Nvidia poised to launch at least the RTX 4090 sometime in the fall and AMD also readying itself to launch Radeon 7000 in early Q4 2022. Let's jump into some of your questions. I thought this was really, really good value questions right now, right? Ryzen 7000 versus 5000, SolWD, Salinity, a zillion other people, but I thought these two really summed it up the best. As a first time builder, frankly, any PC builder, should you wait for Ryzen 7000? Uh, Sol just bought a RTX 3070 right now. He's gonna go 5600X, but should he go 7600X instead? Salinity brings up the DDR5 question and the, the next gen CPUs and GPUs coming. Right now, if you're building at the low end, I think you're probably fine. 7600X is gonna be $300, right? $300 for that CPU. Kind of expensive compared to a Ryzen 5600 for about $160, $150, right? So, and if you're pairing that with a GPU like an RTX 3070, I think they're selling right now for just under $500. I do expect GPU prices to go much lower, but let's get into the GPU prices in just a moment. Let's stay with Ryzen. 5,000 versus 7,000. Yes, I think that if you're building low end or kind of that lower mid range, you're probably fine to still to stick with Ryzen 5,000 at this point. If you are going to get a, a super fast GPU, if you were thinking about for some reason buying a 6950 XT, because that's when AMD showed their numbers of 5600X versus the 7600X on the website that they just released. And they say, oh, it's up to 30% faster in a lot of games. Yeah, who's pairing a 5600X with the 6950 XT? I wouldn't have done that Anyway, I would have gone with a 5800X 3D. We'd probably see those numbers be dead even. The 7600X probably will sell out. You know, you might have a hard time getting a motherboard. We just don't know uh, supply side right now. You know, hopefully it'll be much better than Ryzen 5000. We don't have a silicon charge. But just to give you a value proposition, I see, I would put an absolute hold on any of the Ryzen CPUs that are the high core count uh, CPUs right now. 
you're going to want to get a, a Ryzen 7000 CPU, uh, you know, the similar price point right now, because it's just going to blow the doors off the older gen CPUs. But if you're building at the budget with a Ryzen 5600, go for it. And 5800X3D, I think, still can make some sense, given the cost savings of DDR4 memory, cheaper B550 motherboards, you know, cheaper cooling, all that kind of stuff. And of course, a lot of people asked about GPU prices, obviously in concert with Ryzen 7000 launching and new GPUs coming down the pike. So let's just briefly go through. Now, if you don't watch our monthly GPU update, uh, market update video, uh, you should definitely check it out. I'll leave a link to the last one down in the video description, the whole playlist. There are some massive changes going on in the GPU market, which AMD and Nvidia do not want to talk about. They don't want to acknowledge are happening. And in fact, I don't see a lot of, of folks talking about them yet, although I, that it is increasing. That's Ethereum is going to merge on September, around September 15th. It's tied to a block time. It's not tied to a date, but it looks like we're going to hit that block around September 15th. People are like, well, what the heck does that matter for? I just want to buy a GPU, Jason. 98% of the profit that GPU miners can make out there will disappear suddenly. So you'll have 100% of those folks fighting it out for 2% of the profit. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to be a bloodbath. Nobody's going to be able to make money. People are going to panic sell GPUs. And you say, ah, oh, Jason, I don't want to buy a used GPU. I want to buy. It doesn't matter what you want. I'm talking about market dynamics here. So just stay with me for a second because new GPU prices are also tied to used GPU prices because when somebody out there who's not you goes out and buys a used GPU, they don't need a GPU anymore. Right? They're not looking for a new GPU. They've got their thing over here. So if you see RTX 3090s for $200, $250 all of a sudden, and I'm not saying they're going to hit there, but I could actually see scenarios where that happens. We're talking about tens of millions of GPUs suddenly swamping the market. Who knows what's going to happen in terms of new pricing? We could see that AMD and NVIDIA really, really struggle to sell their newer cards. Now, they do have some exclusivity here, right? What they have ex exclusive is they can offer a level of performance that you can't get on on the used market. They're going to be able to offer that uh, a level of exclusivity on their top end cards only. But if you say that the 4070 gets the same performance as the 3090 and the 4070 is $600 and I can go buy a used 3090 for $250, which one do you think I'm probably going to go get? The 3090 for $250 for less than half the price. So it's going to be very, very interesting. And if they don't sell those cards and their quarterly earnings get hurt, that hurts their share price. And that is the only thing that they really care about. If they're not doing well in sales, especially over the holiday season, over the fall, Black Friday period, they are going to take drastic action to not get obliterated because they've already bought the allocation at TSMC. They've already bought the silicon production. It's coming. So either they're going to have to like throw the silicon away, stick it in a warehouse, do something with it. What they want to do is they want to sell those GPUs to you. And if they're not able to sell those GPUs, then the whole market is going to get swamped. And we may see, I think, the biggest buyer's market for GPUs, which is good for consumers, that we've seen since 2018, 2019 when Ethereum crashed. All right, Lance, that's a great question about pricing for Ryzen 7000. How is that gonna affect pricing on Ryzen 5000? Well, the precedent to me, I wouldn't look at last generation. We had the silicon shortage. They were both on 3000 and Ryzen 5000 were both on seven nanometer. I think that's kind of a real you know, unique situation. I'd go back to Ryzen 3000 when it launched. What happened to Ryzen 2000? Well, initially, when it launched, they kept the prices of Ryzen 2000 relatively high. In fact, I remember the prices actually went up on a number of the CPUs until Black Friday, or right before Black Friday, right around those sales. Then all of a sudden, AMD just made it rain in terms of Ryzen 2000. You could get a Ryzen 2600X for like a hundred bucks. I remember you could get a 2700X for something like $130. It was insane the amount that they were cutting those CPUs, but they waited until 3000 had launched and had kind of its full initial sales run to do that. Now, the ramp up right now is kind of tight. So I don't know, maybe we won't see those discounts given that they're gonna launch at the end of September that will only give them a month and a half to sell through for 70, the 7000 series. But I think if there are gonna be steep discounts on 5000, I'm going to bet we're going to see it around Black Friday. Maybe even they'll wait for the day of Black, for actual Black Friday and Cyber Monday to, to sink those sales in. But that's when I expect to see them. And I expect huge sales on B550 motherboards, all the, all the accoutrements, DDR4 memory. This is it. DDR4 is going 
effectively away. It will probably never be as cheap as about to be on Black Friday, right? Because all that will switch over to DDR5 production. So that's what I would expect with pricing right now is initially st probably stay stable, but around Black Friday, I would expect a huge crash. Jackal XX22 asks, as a builder, which of the 7,000 series has the most value to cost? I actually thought this was interesting. Remember the 5800X took a lot of flack because it, the cost didn't make sense compared to the 5600X. And I think what they've done now, if you look at the 50, the 7600X costs $300. If you divide that out, six cores, that's $50 a core. Well, the 7700X now costs $400. That's also $50 per core. So to me, they've they figured the scaling out right this time. Uh, and the price is 50 bucks less than the 5800X was. That being said, I think they're leaving a nice little gap in there to sell you the 7800X 3D when they come out with it sometime early, you know, in 2023. And on the high end, I think they've done something similar. So you, you get the 7950X is $699, where it's almost like you, you buy a, buy 15 cores and you get one free. So the per core price for the 7950X and the 7900X are about the same, which is actually lower than, than um, the uh, 7600X, 7700X. But in terms of the best value right now, I think if you're just gaming, 7600X, don't see a value place really for the 7700X. And then at the high end right now, if you are doing high end production, yeah, I would, I'd just pump that all the way up. That being said, then you know, you gotta think about the motherboard, you gotta think about the DDR5 memory, all that. But the cost, those platform costs are gonna be effectively the same. The big question is gonna be how much better is X670, X670E, then B650 motherboards, and what's the price gap between them? To me, there was too big a price gap between X570 and B550. Now, B550 took forever to come out. Uh, this is gonna be one on top of the other, so I think they're gonna be smarter about the pricing because I spent the next several years telling everybody, don't get X570 for gaming. You don't need it. It doesn't make any sense. And I, I, you know, I would love to tell people that X670 made sense in at least some circumstance. It wasn't just a useless motherboard or maybe just creator-focused motherboards, but I suspect the B650 is gonna be where gamers are gonna wanna be on that end of it. All that being said, of course, we're gonna actually have to wait to see the motherboards themselves, to test the motherboards, themselves to see what the various uh, feature differences is and you know make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we're going to be doing a lot of that here we actually got even more really really good questions but honestly i don't even want to hazard a guess at some of the stuff because only amd at this point and maybe not even amd know the answer to some of these questions i think it'll have to be revealed stay subscribed turn on those notifications. We're gonna look at best motherboards. We're gonna look at best DDR5 memory in terms of the price to performance, to the speed, the best coolers for these CPUs. And of course, then we'll talk about, you know, best builds and things like that. That's all coming down the pike. We're gonna talk about the GPUs as they come. I'm super fired up for this fall. After the GPU shortage, silicon shortage, all the nonsense that went on the last about two years, the GPU market I think is gonna be good in ways that nobody really expects right now. And I think AMD and Nvidia are terrified about but good for consumers. So overall, I'm super fired up about this. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll catch you on the next one.